In this video, we'll be using the limiting process to find the area under a curve. The example that we'll be working with is use the limit process to find the area of the region between f of x equals 4 minus x squared and the x-axis over the interval from 1 to 2. Now you'll notice I drew a sketch of the graph where the red portion represents the area that we're uh, looking at. And then the black right here represents just the uh, a representative rectangle. My width of my rectangle is delta x. And the height of the rectangle will be found by taking f of some x value in that rectangle. So our first step is to divide the interval into n rectangles. So the width of my representative rectangle, my delta x, the upper bound on my interval, subtract the lower bound, and divide that up into n rectangles. So this simplifies to 1 over n. So my delta x is 1 over n. Set that aside. I'm going to be needing that when I do the area of my rectangle. Then my next step is determine the x value in the ith rectangle. And we do that by stating that my x sub i is equal to the left bound plus i times delta x. Now, if we were looking at the first rectangle, this would be 1 delta x. The second rectangle is 2 delta x. And so we're talking about a generic uh, ith rectangle, so it's going to be i delta x. So our x sub i is going to be, my left bound is 1, plus, and then i delta x. So let's save this. This is going to be used with my area formula. Right. Then I know that the area of this region is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation as i goes from 1 to n um, the height of my rectangle, which is f of x sub i, times the width of my rectangle, which is delta x. Now, in some places, you see this as c sub i. So I like to use x sub i. It's the same thing. All right, now let's put these things in our area. So we have limit as n approaches infinity of the summation as i goes from 1 to n of x of, now we need our x value in our ith rectangle, so that's going to be this right here. So 1 plus i delta x. So this is the height of my rectangle. 
and then multiply that by the width of my rectangle, which is delta x. And this right here, we know that f of x is 4 minus x squared. So this right here is going to be Four minus the quantity one plus i delta x squared. So my area then is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation as i goes from one to n of 4 minus 1 plus i delta x quantity squared times the width of the rectangle which is delta x. Now we have one more substitution before we start uh, doing our summation formulas. Delta x is 1 over n So this is the limit as n approaches infinity. Summation i goes from 1 to n. 4 minus 1 plus i. And then delta x, we're going to put a 1 over n in there. Quantity squared and then 1 over n. Before we do our summation formulas, we want to pull out in front of the summation any factors that don't have an i in them, and then simplify a little bit. So this is limit, and goes to infinity. 1 over n, because we're going to take this guy out in front. And then this is 4 minus the quantity 1 plus, and when I multiply here I get i over n. Let's multiply out this binomial squared. Four minus uh, one squared would be one. And then 1 times i over n doubled. It's 2i over n. And then i over n quantity squared is i squared over n squared. And let's distribute this minus. Four minus one minus two i over n minus i squared over n squared. And then we can combine those. So 3 minus 2i over n 
minus i squared over n squared. Now let's put our formulas in. The summation of a constant is just the constant times the upper limit of summation. So this will be 3n minus, and then we have 2 over n, separate that away from the i, so 2 over n times and then our summation formula for i is just n times n plus 1 over 2 minus, and then on this one we'll separate the n squared away from the i squared, so 1 over n squared times, and then the summation of i squared formula is that rather long one, which is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Now we need to simplify this a little bit. So we have 3n. Um, here I can cancel my n's off in this term right here. And so we have minus 2 times n plus 1 over 2. And then minus um, this one I can take this n and one of these n's and I have n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6n. Now these will cancel. I'll need to distribute this negative through this binomial. So I have 3n minus n minus 1. And I'm going to multiply these two binomials out. So minus 2n squared, 2n plus 1n is 3n, and then 1 times 1 plus 1, and that's over 6. Let's distribute our 1 over n through here. When I multiply 1 over n times 3n, I get 3 minus, and then 1 over n times n is 1 minus. 1 over n times 1 is 1 over n minus. I'm going to split these up. I'll do that one first. So 1 over n times this fraction gives me 2n squared over 6n squared, which simplifies to 1 third. And 
Now I'll distribute this minus and the 1 over n into this second term. So that gives me the 3n over 6n is 1 half. And then I have this 1 over n coming in. So minus 1 over 2n. And then let's look at this last one. Um, when I multiply the 1 over n through there, I have 1 over 6n squared. And finally then, when, as n approaches infinity, this term goes to 0, this term goes to 0, and this term goes to 0. So I have 3 minus 1 minus 1 third, which simplifies to 5 thirds.